rock and learn. <sighs> I feel much better now. Uh, that's nice, but where are we? Just where we should be. In the Geology Learning Center. This is where we can learn about different kinds of rocks and how they are made. Take a look at all these layers of rocks. Little bits of earth were washed downstream. They settled to the bottom of a river, lake, or ocean. Layer after layer was deposited on top, so they were pressed down more and more. Over time, the layers turned into a type of rock called sedimentary rock. That's right! Sedimentary rocks make up about three quarters of the rocks at the Earth's surface. Sometimes they can give us clues about what the environment was like when those rocks were formed. How can they do that? Well, sometimes dead plants or animals get buried in the sediment. They get covered up by new layers of sediment and sometimes become fossils. Some fossils are actually parts of an animal, like its teeth or bones that have turned into stone or fossilized. Others are trace fossils, like dinosaur footprints or tunnels made by worms. But most fossils are casts. The dead plants and animals decay after the sediment is turned into rock, leaving behind a hollow mold. Salts or other minerals can fill the cast and hold its shape. Fossils found in the same layer of sedimentary rock are from things that lived around the same time. As new layers form on top, the fossils get buried deeper and deeper. I think I understand. So the deeper the fossils are found, the older they are? You've got it! And sometimes large amounts of plants are deposited in sedimentary rocks. If they are compressed under a lot of pressure, for a long period of time, they turn into carbon. This gives us coal, oil, natural gas, and petroleum. I guess that's why they're called fossil fuels. You bet it is. And let me tell you, fossil fuels are really a gas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. OK. Sedimentary rocks make up about three-quarters of the rocks at Earth's surface. You got it. What about the rest of the rocks? What are they? Glad you asked. There are two other kinds of rocks, igneous and metamorphic. Igneous rocks form when molten rock cools and becomes solid. Molten rock is called magma when it is below the Earth's surface. But sometimes magma pushes up through cracks to the surface of the Earth. Then it is called lava. Oh, I just love a, a good eruption. <laughs> Stop that. When lava cools, it becomes a kind of igneous rock called volcanic rock. Basalt is the most common type of volcanic rock. Most of the rocks on the ocean floor are basalt. Igneous rock can also form when magma cools slowly and becomes hard while it's deep underground. Rocks that form this way, like granite, usually have large crystals. Fossils are not usually found in igneous rocks. The heat of a volcanic eruption tends to destroy living things and only rarely preserves any evidence of them. However, fossils may be found in volcanic ash deposits, which are actually a kind of sedimentary rock. That makes sense. Sedimentary rocks are made from sediment, and igneous rocks are made when molten rock is cooled. But what about metamorphic rocks? How do they form? Good question, kiddo. Metamorphic rocks are rocks that have morphed or changed from one kind of rock into another. Metamorphic rocks were once igneous or sedimentary rocks, but movement of the Earth's crust caused them to change. Just moving the rocks changes them? No. Try pushing your hands together very hard. <clears throat> Do you feel heat and pressure? Yeah. <sighs> when the Earth's crust moves, igneous or sedimentary rocks get squeezed by tremendous pressure, which heats the rocks and pulls them like taffy. The original rock is changed by this heating and pulling, 
and it becomes a metamorphic rock. As you might guess, any fossils that were in the sedimentary rock will now be in the metamorphic rock. But those fossils may be stretched and deformed because of the heating and pooling. Bummer! Metamorphic rocks are the least common of the three kinds of rocks. Slate and marble are two examples. Wow, that really rocks! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what's this? A rock concert? As a matter of fact, it is. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome all the way from Little Rock, Arkansas, the Pet Rocks! two rocks may be formed the same way, they can be made up of different kinds of minerals. That's right! To identify the minerals in rocks, scientists use properties like color, luster, hardness, and streak. Look at these! I wonder what minerals they are. Hey, if I describe their properties, that might help me to identify them. Bravo! Now, the color of a mineral is the first thing people tend to notice. But be careful! Most minerals can occur in more than one color. Luster describes how light is reflected from the surface of a mineral. The two main types of luster are metallic and non-metallic. The hardness of a mineral is its ability to resist scratching. The Mohs Hardness Scale uses 10 minerals to rank hardness. Take a look here. A diamond is the hardest naturally occurring substance, with a hardness of 10. And talc is very soft, so it only has a hardness of 1. That's all good and fine, but how can I find out the hardness of the minerals in this box? With a little scratching. Not that kind of scratching. We'll use minerals and objects from the Mohs scale. If your mineral sample can scratch an object, say this penny, then it has a higher hardness. Let's try this one. Ooh, good choice. I like the nice metallic luster. Can it scratch a penny? Looks like it does, Marco. That means this mineral has a hardness higher than three. That's the way to do it. Now try scratching this quartz. Nope. And look, the quartz will scratch my mineral sample. So it has a hardness between three and seven. We could keep on scratching away with different materials from the Mohs scale to narrow it down even more. But I think you get the idea. I sure do. Thanks, Tara! Another way to categorize minerals with a hardness lower than 7 is to determine their streak. Streak? Does that mean some of them have racing stripes? <laughs> nah. The streak of a mineral is the color of the powder it leaves when you scrape it across a streak plate. We know your mineral has a hardness lower than 7, so... Red? That's not what I would have guessed at all! Don't feel too bad, kid. Science is full of surprises. Have a look at this table here. Do any of those descriptions match your mineral? Let me see. Steel gray. Hardness 5.5 to 6.5. Rust red streak. Metallic luster. I'll bet this is hematite! That's the way to do it! Great job! 